please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Quest for Fire, Movie Thoughts. I will start by saying that the scene that I mentioned in the review that my father remembered and could retell in great detail 25 years after watching the movie was when the, the, the three are chased by these saber-toothed tigers and chased into this one tree and have to stay up there and you see the the passing of time and suddenly the branch breaks off and excuse me he instantly hurries up and only after he's gotten up there excuse me they look down and see that the saber tooth tigers are gone i can completely understand why he remembered it so well. He told me, he described it to me before we watched it together and yeah, I have a feeling that is going to stick in my mind for quite some time as well. Just the richness of detail, the, the way you can instantly, I mean, you don't even, you, you instantly perceive what they're going to do. You don't think that they're going to try to outrun these things. It, it just instantly, you, you know instinctively, they can't do that. It runs faster than them. So what do they do? Oh, there's a tree. Up the tree. Cats can't, can't climb trees, or they're certainly very bad at getting back down. And so... Well, big cats can't climb trees, I guess is the... yeah. And up there, the... You know, the, you start seeing them eating these leaves. Because it's food, and they're there, and they're there for a long time. And they're hungry. And so, yeah, leaves. It's food. It... you know... And it... The, the, it, it cuts back to the tree, and no more leaves are just a few off on a branch that they can't quite reach. And that tells you how long, or tells you that they've been there for a really long time. And it's just, it's a great detail. And the, 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 the branch that snaps, and he doesn't even look around. He just instantly runs up. And the way that it's filmed so that we don't immediately realize that the danger is past either. We think that he has to hurry up back that back up that tree. And the just yeah the, the fact that it is almost that is almost the fact that they that one of them falls out of the tree that makes them realize oh the saber tooth timer is gone. They could have been up there for a very long time. Because they were just waiting, they were just waiting for it to leave. And suddenly they have a reason to look down because they don't hear it running around. And he's like, well, didn't it get me at all? And uh, there you go. And I also love the scene where they're, I think it's a different, yeah, it's, it's later in the film, they're in a different tree and there are these nests, bird nests. And Perlman is, uh, you know, drinking out of an egg. And, well, actually, I guess he's picking it out of... And the... the, the one of the other guys, it, apparently there aren't too many in his nests or something. Perlman was maybe faster. And he, he tries to get the egg from Perlman, and it, it breaks, and they get really angry at each other. And it's just... 
it makes perfect sense. It is this primitive culture where it's just whoever gets the food first eats the food. You know, it's, there's no kind of... Because they don't know when they'll eat again. And so it is just the survival of the fittest, literally. It, and, and they did a really good job of... And of course, that frustrates the others, but that is how it is. It, it doesn't compel him to share. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the, the bit with the cannibalism and then the sort of the reaction of the, our, our hero tribe to that, or the three tribesmen anyway that they, it's, it's a great moment when, you know, they and we realize that this is, you know, these were cannibals, they're, that they get one of the, the bones out and start gnawing at it, getting a little bit of whatever meat is left on, and then one of the others uncovers a skull in all the ashes, and they realize this was a human being, and it throws away, spits out the meat, and I guess it's supposed to be, maybe I'm wrong, but sort of supposed to be a characterization, good and evil kind of thing, where the good guys don't eat each other, and the bad guys are cannibalistic, when in reality, it's just, there are some cultural cannibals, there are cultures where they believe that cannibalism will aid them, will give them the strength of their enemy by eating him, especially the heart, I believe, as far as I recall. And then there are all these situations where it it was a live or die situation. You hear about it. it here in the West, it's almost the, the joke. You know, if, if we crash on a plane, you can eat me. Yeah, it happens. If you're not sure if you will survive, if you're not sure you'll be... If you're not... If there isn't food enough, and there doesn't appear to be food enough anytime soon, yeah. Well, if the plane crashes in the Andes, sorry, I left that part out, but I think you get what I'm saying. And, yeah, it, it isn't really bad people eat others, but, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe the movie isn't really saying that it is evil, maybe it's just saying that this tribe doesn't like it, I don't know. I really love all the different... All, all the times we see the respect and attention paid to the fire. For, for one thing, them almost bathing or swimming in the ashes, you know, before they realize about the cannibal stuff there. They, they get to this fire that's been put out, and it's, you know, it's, it's ashes, and there's, there are these what, em embers, I guess, and, yeah, all, all this stuff, and, and they're just, they're, they're putting the ashes on their face, and it's, it's, it's like, ah, crap, is, is it called, I, I don't know how you pronounce it, mana, mana, so it's ma mana, I don't know, mana, I'm going with mana, that it's like they think that because the fire means life to them, it literally keeps them alive, they think that the ashes, if, if they put it on them, might imbue them with something, might, might help them live longer, for example, or might give some of the 
these these important you know vital properties to them the, the, that kind of thing and when you know when, when the fire goes out in in the beginning of the film when when they escape and they're like is, is the fire and and the fire bearer comes and and walks out to them and they get and and the fire is gone and they just and and out goes these three to to get the fire and the first time you, they they see the smoke from the fire and you're right there with them going yes they they found fire and and the the crying when that one of, of the trio sees fire being started manually it's it's almost a transcendent experience for him because it's not just yay more fire it's we can create fire it's it it's it's teaching a man to fish who had until now just expected the fish to come you know to to sacrifice themselves so he could eat he, he didn't even know that that was possible he they, they didn't go out for a means of fire they went out just for fire and he can't even he doesn't he, he understands it but only just barely, and it's so, yeah, just, like I said, transcendent. He, I thought that was brilliantly handled, and the music, and the, the build-up, and all the details, you know, spitting in the hands, and, and then later when he tries it, he doesn't quite get, and, and it's so built up, and oh no, it doesn't quite work. And, and that's right after you've had this, oh no, the fire was put out. They had fire, and then in, in the joy, the, the one, I guess the fire bearer from the start of the film, I think it was him, accidentally put it out in, in the water, and they're, they're devastated, because after all that, they lose the fire again, and then he tries to make it, and it doesn't work. And then the the um, I'm not gonna call her the girl, Ray Dong Chong, Ray for short, R D C, sounds the gangster. R D C goes in, spits her hands. And does it, and she's she's had practice. She knows how to do it because it was from her tribe. Her tribe figured out how to do this, and so she, of course, knows how to do it. And she makes the fire, and it's this fantastic. It's it's the world to this tribe, and then it closes on the image of her sitting next to the mate, sort of, who, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to that, and she, we, we can see her, her stomach, she's pregnant, so, we, we have this promise for the future, this, that they now have the means of fire, the, the means to produce fire, and there is the, the promise of an, a new child. It's, you know, life, the, the fire was preserved, the life-giving fire, and thus life can continue on to the next generations. And it is this culture, this meeting of cultures, where they, for, they're, they're sort of the obvious thing in that final scene where with the father and the mother are from two different tribes and then you have the fact that she was the one who taught them how to make fire. So they got something out of this meaning of cultures. 
the other tribe maybe not as well. Then again, he did impregnate those, what was it, five women total? I love that they're, they're sitting there on a bench waiting. The, the, the woman like lies down by him and is like, at first he kind of doesn't quite get it. And they're like doing these, it's, it's a ritual and all of them watch and that there might be some kind of thing where they, they like primitive, some primitive cultures might think that if all of them watch, it's more likely that it, that, that a child comes out of it or something. And they're, they're doing these, I, I think they're like whipping with something just, just in the air. And at first he doesn't get it. And, and then she like gets into that position, doggy style. And then he gets it, and then he gets into his position, and the cheering just goes insane. And then after that's done, we see the bench with these, I think it was four other women waiting. And then one of them gets up and moves, and the other three move over. It's just brilliantly done. It's, it's funny, and it's, it's quite realistic. I imagine that they would, it's, they're getting new, new genetic material, and though they don't, they, they wouldn't put it like that, but they on some level understand, they've maybe seen, they may very well have experienced that DNA from other tribes can help improve their own kind of yeah, this, the, their own tribe, the future generations of their own tribe. So, yeah, maybe they got something out of it as well. And the, the meeting of cultures also comes through in they get those little spears, which were quite different from their own. They, they made spears with fire. And as my father pointed out as we were watching it, is unrealistic that they could, excuse me, throw them that well without, we don't see them practice at least. But it is, it is a good image of these, yeah, this, this meeting of cultures and how they're benefiting from meeting other groups. I wonder if the Republicans would ban it just on that. Not, not even the, all the sex and nudity. Anyway, the... I suppose that about covers it for the meaning of cultures. The RDC, RDC and mate. I quite, it's, it's obviously fairly conventional. It's, it's almost the leading man and the romance between him and his leading lady. He even, he goes back for her. I, I like how this, how it sort of plays out with she is getting near her village her, I suppose it is a village. They had huts, didn't they? Yeah. And yeah, she she wants to go back. At, at first, she goes with the trio. Even you know, making herself useful to. I think it was Ron Perlman. Maybe it was her mate, but I think it was Ron. With oral sex, and it's like she was taken from her people and brought a bit of a distance away. So she, she had much better chances of survival with the trio. And when they get closer to her village, she wants to go back, so when they're sleeping, she runs back, and 
it would appear at least, that is how my father and I interpreted it. <laughs> he interpreted it. I wasn't sure at first, and then later I felt like, ah, that probably makes sense. That seems to make sense from the rest of the movie. Her mate came back for her. He, he was the fire bearer of the trio, and he doesn't want to go. And, and at first he just lies down, and then the other two lie down, and you know, they're, they're thinking, oh, just rest, sleep. And then he still won't go. So, the, they, they kind of follow him and try to get him back. And he finds this hut, this abandoned hut, with, like, a pot. My father insisted that that could be a clay pot, because they couldn't have made that for quite a bit of time. And I trust him, because he's the one who can remember history. Not from having experienced it, mind you. And... Anyway, it's, it was like, if it would make sense if it was made of fruit, I think he said. And it kind of suggests, it's the first suggestion that the tribe that she is from is more advanced than they are, has better tools. And thus we later see the these little spears and then the fact that they can make fire. They can't just keep it alive, but they can actually produce it themselves. And soon after, the mate finds the village, and th this would all seem to suggest, yeah, that he did go back for her. And I guess by the end of the movie, she is in love with him. Is the sort of that's that's what's suggested suggested. Although the you know when when he I guess the first time they have sex, she doesn't really appear to be into it. So I don't know. I guess I'm also just not entirely sure about monogamy back then, or if it wasn't more that just the strongest, like the alpha male of the tribe would get the best women, and other than that, it was kind of a pecking order kind of thing where the, the by their standards, most attractive female would go to by their standards the most attractive male, and so on down the, the, the line until the supposedly least attractive female with the supposedly least attractive male. But I'm not sure. Maybe there was some monogamy, and it maybe also just makes for a better kind of... better. It makes for a more straightforward story conclusion that he now has her as a mate and the and, and yeah she's pregnant with his child. I do also like the the bit where she's sort of painting herself and he helps paint her a little and he still has some of his paint left from the, the paint he got in the village, because, you know, that's, that's kind of what they do. I like how it's almost that they have um, a trap, or a, a security system, the R RDC's tribe, that if someone approaches them, they will fall into this quicksand, I guess, or a, a marsh, maybe. Now, the, the, the beginning was a marsh. I think it was quicksand around her tribe. And, yeah, the, they have to come and help them up. And thus, if 
it, it's at, at that point it's kind of understood y you know you owe us something which you know we we take semen and th that that's it as payment and the and I like how they're kind of marking their territory. This was also something my father pointed out to me. He knows substantially more about primitive people than I do. They're throwing their spears around him just to, to highlight that they are in control and he needs their help. And then one of them throws a rock at his head just for a laugh, I guess. I also really like how that when when Ron Perlman gets a rock in in the head at an earlier point in the movie, she laughs uproariously. And then later, after the after the trio has met this her tribe and they've left. I don't remember exactly who throws it. I think it's Pearl who throws a rock at one of the other's heads. And then all of them laugh, including the guy who got a rock to his head. Even after, you know, touching his scalp and finding that he's bleeding. And it is this, and, and that is something that some primitive people employ, it's, it's instead of getting frustrated, they laugh. Because if, if you're spending a lot of energy being frustrated about something that went wrong, then that's energy wasted that you could have spent on something that you really need to do. And they're still getting that energy out. They're, they're just, they're, they're laughing to get it out. But, you know, it's, it's that thing of you know, negative thinking, kind of just meanders. You don't really get out of it. You have to think positive, you know. I love the various scenes with the animals. I already mentioned the saber-toothed tiger. I don't particularly have anything to add to that. The mammoths with, like, I, I read that there are circus elephants I'm still really impressed. I, I figured that at least part of it would have to be a real elephant, but the fact that they actually put all that hair, I guess, on elephants and and had the tusks put in, same as they put the, the saber tooth, excuse me, on the tigers, but much more. Yeah, much more was done to these elephants, and it's just fantastic. And and the fact that they, you know, it is this thing of there's the enemy tribe, there and and their numbers are great, and they've got to surround it. They at at first they're just like, okay, we gotta run, we gotta run this way. Oh crap, they're there as well. And then suddenly behind them comes these. Mammoths. And I love how at first, I think it's Perlman thinks that he's the one scaring them, so he just keeps you know, waving these sticks and yelling, and then they like, I think it's her already see makes him turn around and see, and then there's mammoths there. <clears throat> Excuse me, and yeah, and and it's this entire group of them and. That makes sense. They, uh, I believe, elephants travel in groups, and they're very dangerous in a group. You could maybe, if if you have a group of people and there's only one mammoth, you could maybe, yeah. and even so, it would be risky to attack one. But a group, and so he goes and offers the what's it called? Grass and 
it it accepts this gift and it it makes sense. It's again that, that the primitive thinking. It's that there is something extremely powerful out there, and maybe we can appease it. And yeah, that that's the thinking behind a lot of religion. And so, yeah, you they they now have protection for a little while. And the other tribe tries to attack, but the mammoth don't like that. And I would run away as well if if mammoths were. And and it's also the, the fact that he can appease it makes a certain amount of sense because they they weren't carnivores. They they wouldn't really be interested in the people. They wouldn't try to eat the humans. So as long as the humans don't threaten, that they don't feel threatened by the humans, they would leave them alone. And on the subject of feeling threatened by humans, we of course have the bear scene. And I love how it starts by them just hiding in this little cave, and then they spot spot a bear cub, and you're just you're you're co you're connecting the dots in your own head. You know exactly what's going to happen, and then it happens. Mama bear, not happy. It makes perfect sense. Uh, you know a. In general, what you really don't want to run into in the wild is a protective mother near its offspring, and bears are known to be really protective of their offspring. So it just you know exactly what's going to happen, and then it happens, and it's not you know it's it's that fantastic thing when what happens makes sense and you can kind of see it coming but it still really works. And that is one of the things, as I mentioned in the review, that it doesn't really seem like they should have survived, at least not how it plays out. If a bear had been that close to a human and he hadn't really done... Basically, what my father and I both thought was Someone's got to whack that in the head with a rock. Prime candidate would be RDC because she's, you know, she's not in the immediate, you know, her mate, which I guess is also part of the thing, you know, she runs away so, and calls the others so that they can save him because she really wants him to survive. But it, you know, it, it has that... The, yeah, the, the bear isn't really on RDC, and so it would have made a lot of sense if she grabbed... But I, I get, if for her character it makes sense, she's not very aggressive or violent in the entire movie. I really like how when she, she lies next to him, next to her mate, in the village, and immediately, she, no, no, can't do that, because that's not her place. She doesn't belong there on the on, on the rank of also I imagine that the reason it was for heavy women was probably that they saw that they can withstand giving birth better. I mean, I have to remember back then there were none of the modern comforts. You now back then birth it could easily result in one, maybe two deaths. So, yeah, you want someone who can give birth to live babies and who can survive the birth herself. Anyway, the... Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like he should have survived encountering that bear at all. That, that is kind of the thing of just... Yeah, they're, they're the main characters, so... They have to make it out alive. It was a little harsh the way the the trio just leave the camp with yeah, you know, and and they steal all that stuff from the other tribe as well, and. 
and there's like one guy who like wakes up and so, or something and he just gets smacked so he falls back asleep again if he does wake up from that and yeah but it it kind of does make sense they they got what they wanted and they didn't really they they weren't there to stay and again it is very very realistic it's not saying this is right it's saying this is what happened and that's that was just the way it was i suppose that more or less covers it yes Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.